Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is an i3-4130. It has just two cores but makes use of hyper-threading. As a two-core four-threaded chip, its functionality in 2020 is questionable, though from what I've seen, it can still handle itself in some modern games. Not trouble-free, though with some degree of respectability. That got me wondering about just how well hyper-threading actually helps it out. If this was just a two-core, two-threaded processor, how much worse would it be? Well, thanks to a seemingly endless amount of extra time on my hands and an increased urge to try silly ideas, today we're going to find out. So although you probably shouldn't, you can turn off hyper-threading in the BIOS with a couple of clicks. In Cinebench R20, you can see the immediate effect this has on CPU performance. Doing day-to-day -day normal computery things doesn't feel any less quick, and Windows 10 will still feel snappy enough but gaming is a different story. Let's start with a game that was impacted the most by a lack of hyper-threading, GTA 5. With hyper-threading enabled, we were seeing a few stutters here and there, though the game became, and I don't use this term very often, unplayable. The freezes here were just too much to bear. Here's a quick clip. In contrast to GTA 5, we have CSGO, which although did suffer frame rate wise, didn't exhibit too many stutters and on the surface was still playable. It's not perfect, but it was far from a PowerPoint presentation, which is always a bonus. As usual, the footage is from a bot match for convenience sake, but the figures were taken from a combination of three online games. Going into Red Dead Redemption 2, and I was certain the game wouldn't launch, it's always crashed every time I've tried running it on a two-core, two-threaded CPU, but in this case, it seemed to fire up just fine. It even ran better than GTA 5 as far as the percentile figures were concerned. Red Dead does tend to be quite lenient on processors with fewer cores though, though two threads will mean less than 30 FPS on average. Finally, it's Fortnite. This gave our processor some trouble regardless of hyper-threading, though the figures were once again reduced when turning it off. Now don't get me wrong, this won't be the case with all processors. If you turn off hyper-threading or on AMD CPUs simultaneous multi-threading with more powerful and newer chips with far higher core counts, the differences will likely be less noticeable. But for anyone out there, my guess would be about six people who were wondering about what would happen if we turned off hyper-threading on an i3-4130, well I hope I've answered your question. Now this wasn't all for nothing, it wasn't just a bit of a laugh because I have had a couple of questions in the past regarding uh, processors performing not as well as they should, and in those instances, it turns out that they had purchased pre-built with hyper-threading that had been turned off in the BIOS, so maybe that's something to look out for if you buy a second-hand PC and the processor isn't performing quite as well as you thought it should. But as for this video, well, I hope you've enjoyed it. Leave a like on it if you did. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully in the next one, we'll be taking a look at an Alienware 670 or putting together a Cod Warzone minimum requirements build.